Science is all about answering the big questions. For example, should you cut your toast into rectangles or triangles? Socks or underpants on first? And what would really happen if you Googled Google? Luckily for us, there is no question too great or too small, and there are literally thousands of scientists that have devoted their lives to finding the answers that we're all too lazy to find out ourselves. I'm Cal from What Culture, and this is nine of life's most important questions answered by science. Number nine, toilet seat up or down? This is an argument that has raged since the invention of indoor plumbing, but which side is right? It all really boils down to who is more inconvenienced by each. We all need to sit down at some point, and unless you're some sort of dirty acrobat, only men need to stand. Somewhat inevitably, it turns out the best strategy is just to keep it down. A bacteriologist would probably tell you that it's always the best thing to put it down, as that would stop your toothbrush from being bombarded with poo particles every time you flush. Yummy. Number 8. Why does asparagus make your pee smell? Even if you haven't experienced it yourself, chances are you're aware that asparagus makes your pee smell like someone has died inside you. The question is, why does this happen to only some people? It was assumed for a long time that only certain people produce the chemicals to create the odour. And as other people don't make a habit of sniffing other people's pee, it most definitely was a self-reported phenomenon. What's weirder is that some people find the smell totally repugnant, whereas some people find it quite pleasantly sweet. Perhaps it's just a matter of taste, but please, please, for all of our sakes, do not start tasting each other's urine. Number 7. Where do farts go? Whether you're in a crowded elevator, on a date, or at dinner with the in-laws, everybody has held a fart in before. This means that we'll be aware of the sensation of the fart going away and getting on with our day unaffected. But where does that disappear? The answer, surprisingly, although much of the fart's bulk goes back up into your digestive tract to be re-released at a later date, some of the fart will actually pass through the wall of your intestine into your bloodstream. And then, beautifully, it comes out in your breath, which, as orifices of farts come and go, it's pretty unwanted. Number six, is there a cure for a hangover? To find a cure for a hangover would not only be the greatest thing in the entire world, but chances are many jobs would be saved and sick days would go down drastically. To find a cure for a hangover, first of all, we need to know what the cause is. And unfortunately, we're a little bit hazy on that, much like our vision from the night before. Dehydration is usually named as the main culprit, however, it's not entirely correct. It is thought that alcohol allows the bacteria from your gut to pass through into your bloodstream and your body reacts as though it you have an infection. The best course of action here would be to take an anti-inflammatory or try not to think about the fact that your blood is swimming with poo germs. Number 5. How do you cure a stitch? Forget laziness, the real reason none of us go to the gym is that overwhelming fear that we're going to keel over and die from a stitch. Every time I get one, it's nature's way of insisting that I should have gone to the pub instead. Again, despite conquering the moon, we're not actually super certain what causes a stitch. It's thought that it's to do with a repeated strain of an internal ligament that causes the pain, but which ligament differs from person to person. The main culprit is thought to be when your breathing synchronises with your pace. By changing your pace and your breathing, it should help the pain. Or just stop running and get the bus, or do something else. Number 4. Do protein shakes actually work? Protein supplements used to be the preserve of bodybuilders and professional athletes, but nowadays it seems as though everyone seems to spend more than 20 minutes a week on the treadmill chugging some kind of powdered miracle drink. The average person consumes 30 to 35% more protein than they actually need as a part of their normal diet, so adding the supplement is unlikely to make any form of effect of muscle development. It's more likely to cause weight gain than actually help with the muscle build, so the reality is you're probably more likely to turn into fatso than phelps if you keep it up. Number 3. How does coffee work? We all know that good old cup of joe is enough to give us that little bit of jolt energy that we muchly need. But have you ever stopped to wonder how or why it happens? If it was a simple case of energy, a simple spoonful of sugar would have done exactly the same effect. But in this case, it definitely does not. Caffeine actually works by giving you more energy, but by blocking the neurotransmitter that makes you feel tired. The longer you stay awake, the more the neurotransmitter attaches itself to your neurons and slows their firing rate. Caffeine mimics the structure of this neurotransmitter by attaching itself and thereby blocking it, but it doesn't have effect on any of its firing rates. Number 2. What does human taste like? 
Reports from cannibals throughout history have ranged from like chicken to a gamey goatee flavour. Perhaps, of course, the most famous incident of cannibalism is Armin Muse posted a classified ad on the internet looking for a well-built 18 to 30-year-old to be slaughtered then consumed. Amazingly, the ad reported received over 200 responses. What's wrong with you people? Anyway, the flavour was described as being like pork, but a stronger and more bitter. Alternatively, of course, we could just take the judgement of food analysis robots, which identified the reporter's hand as being like prosciutto. We've hit the top spot number one. What if everyone on Earth were to jump at once? Force exerts an equal and opposite reaction. So if somehow we all managed to gather in one place for the big group jump, it would actually push the Earth away from us. Unfortunately, as the Earth has roughly 600,000 billion more mass than every single human on Earth combined, we would move it roughly one hundredth of the radius of an atom. And then it would spring back and nothing would happen. If we all jump from our positions right now, the effect would be so spread out it would be completely pointless. The force needed to move the Earth out of orbit is so high that it would take billions of times the amount of energy generated on Earth each year. Did we miss any out? Let us know in the comments below. I've been Cal from What Culture. You can follow me on Twitter here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.